resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Vancouver Centre. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I, and I would like to congratulate uh, my colleague from Vancouver East, uh, Vancouver Kingsway, sorry, for a very excellent presentation, and, and I think he understands the issue very well. This is an issue about health. Uh, this is, as the Minister has said and as we have acknowledged, is now a national public health crisis and steps are being taken to work across the country with, with resources, as you heard the Minister saying, as well as working with all of the public health officers in every province to deal with this issue on the ground. And as all of us who are, as, as a physician, I can tell you that the first thing you look at in any kind of public health emergency, whether it's a virus, whether it is a bacteria, whether it is, a, um, as we see now, overdose deaths from uh, tainted uh, opiates, then we know that we must first look at the immediate, urgent means of stopping and of the, the problem and of saving lives, of looking at a medium uh, set of policies and legislation that would look at how we deal with it uh, in, a, in a manner that will help to look at longer term solutions to the problem. And I think the immediacy of this and the fact that I want to congratulate the New Democratic Party for helping to move this so quickly through the House, uh, it means that they get it, means that for most of us in this House, saving lives is paramount. You can put nothing else before saving lives. And I, and I want to congratulate the Minister of Health for bringing about this change uh, in repealing C2, which I consider to have been a very tragic and heinous, actually cruel bill that stopped people from doing what was necessary across this country in saving lives. And if I may paraphrase something that was said by uh, the conservative health critic earlier on in the, uh, today, was that, in fact, Yes, indeed, safe cons consumption sites save lives, but they help people to stay on drugs. I, I want to ask anyone who would have any ounce of common sense, which would you put, put first, saving a life or saying that people should be able to stay on, an, on a drug that, in fact, they are addicted to and that we know all of this is a public health issue and all of this has to do with patient care and an understanding of the issues of public health. So, I want to congratulate the Minister because when the Supreme Court brought down its ruling, the Liberal Party, and I was a health critic at the time, was very adamant that we should listen to what the Supreme Court had said. And the Supreme Court had exactly word for word the five criteria that the Minister has put in this bill. At the time, I remember most of us were absolutely concerned that the Conservative Party brought in what they then called the Safer Communities Act, which I thought no one saw the irony in because it certainly wasn't about safer communities at all. And therefore, what we see now is that since 2011, when the Supreme Court made the ruling, until 2015, four years had passed before the Supreme Court's decision had been considered by this government. And I think that that was a pity and it was sad because it stopped safe injection sites from being set up across this country. It stopped harm reduction. And, and Mr. Speaker, as a physician, I can tell you that harm reduction is about bringing down the mortality rates of any disease, of any condition, of any public health problem, and in fact bringing down the disease rates as well, not just saving lives, but bringing down disease rates. And we saw that the safe injection site, which I am proud to say I was a minister responsible for the downtown east side, setting up the Vancouver Agreement and agreeing with the harm reduction principles that were set out in the four-pillar approach by the then mayor of Vancouver, Philip Owen. And during that time, we had the HIV Center of Excellence for uh, the UBC Center of Excellence for HIV AIDS, who did the actual project, a project that was by 24 peer bodies around the world was accepted as being well done and the evidence was completely accepted. At that time, Mr. Speaker, we had 90 country, 90 safe injection sites around the world, in Switzerland, in the Netherlands, in, uh, in Scandinavian countries, in Australia, in Portugal. This was happening. People had seen that evidence. And this was way then when we were concerned about 234 overdose deaths in the downtown east side. We saw that once a safe injection site had been set up, evidence showed that there were no overdose deaths from anyone who came into that safe injection site. So we had 
in fact stopped death. But the other thing that was noticeable was that the crime rates had gone down in that area. So public order was restored in that area. And we also saw that these very high-risk people who had actually started to use Insight at the time suddenly decided that they wanted to go into treatment. And these were high-risk addicts, Mr. Speaker. And they went into treatment. We had to bring about something called on-site, which is above the Insight site. And there were 25 beds there for people who wanted to, to, to go to treatment. And this was an important piece of the evidence as well. So it not only saved lives, it also helped people to go into treatment. We saw that it restored order, and it fulfilled another criteria. And that criteria was that it allowed people to have hope and to begin to want to build new lives. I think these are some important things about when we look at harm reduction. And so when I hear in this House this morning uh, the, the health critic of the Conservatives saying that, oh yes, of course, evidence shows that it may save lives, but, but it helps them to stay on the drugs. I, I wonder why ideology should take human life so lightly. Because these are human beings, and just because you happen to be addicted to a drug doesn't mean that you are unworthy. Who should say what lives are unworthy and what lives are worthy? And that's what we're talking about here. I'm pleased to see the minister moving forward, calling this a national public health crisis. I'm pleased to see the extra pieces with regard to opening of mail that, that is suspicious, that may contain th under, uh, 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 under 30 grams uh, or 30 grams of, um, of fentanyl, because we know that 30 grams of fentanyl can actually impact or cause 15 thousand deaths. And this is a huge number. We're talking about deaths in the thousands. After Insight, we not only saw the deaths were, were stopped, but we also saw that the rate of HIV, there had been 2,100 new cases at the time Insight opened of HIV AIDS. That went down to 31. Mr. Speaker, this is what we're talking about here. The need to look at this as something that is essential and that's important. I am pleased to see the new Democrats supporting this bill. I am pleased to see everyone in this House determined to move it forward because this is essential. If we're going to have safe injection sites and all the evidence that has been proven on safe injection sites to in fact save lives and to bring down mortality and morbidity. It's important, and I understand why, when the, 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 the member, uh, leader of the Green Party talked about not wanting to intervene in terms of the civil liberties of opening up these envelopes, but I think in the case of life being saved, this is an essential thing that we must do. I'm glad to see the minister bringing about precursors in this bill, to stop precursors, precursors that are important in many instances, but at the moment we have to decide that stopping precursors from being given without going through um, a prescription and be, without being approved is actually one way of saving lives as well. At the end of the day, Mr. Speaker, as a physician, I can tell you that every life that is saved as a result of the action that has been taken by this minister with this bill and in some of the making the lock so widely available uh, moving forward. I, I think the member of the NDP said it is important that we do not allow the mobile units that are in fact helping to save lives at the moment in Vancouver Centre and that are infringing on, on the law should be able to be given this, not simply as a bubble zone, but this is something that should be considered across the country if we see this as a national crisis. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I just, I, just, I just want to say that there are other things that we can do. I think we were asked what are the other things we can do. I think the minister has moved very swiftly uh, to do some of the things that are necessary, but I do think that we need to look at public a public awareness campaign for all of the young people, the young professionals, and the youth who are actually not necessarily addicted, but who are recreational drug, drug users, to be able to let them know that, in fact, the using of drugs off the street is a dangerous thing to do. And the, and the minister moved, when she first came in as minister, to allow for the Salome project, which had also been done uh, under the Christian government, to show whether or not using of substitute pharmaceutical grade heroin was important to save lives, and it was shown that in fact the allowing of, of hydromorphone, which again is being used in what is known as the heroin assisted treatment in Europe and in Scandinavia with a great deal of success, saving lives and helping people to manage 
their addiction so that they don't have to buy off the street anymore. They can go to the clinic and they can get a pharmaceutical drug, which, is, which costs pennies, to be able to save their lives and move them off the street drugs. We have to stop the illicit trafficking, Mr. Speaker. That is of key importance. Uh, if you continue to only look at the demand side of the problem and don't look at the supply side of the problem, we will continue to have illicit opiates not only killing people but damaging lives for a long time. And a lot of the work that has been done in Europe gives us that ability to look at, truly look at evidence-based solutions to this problem, to act as quickly as we can and to make these decisions not based on ideology but on clear evidence and science. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments.